Yeah, but what we do know is because there's been the consensus right from day one is that it's a Celtic stag. It's not an Anglo-Saxon stag or a Viking <laughs> stag. It's a Celtic stag. Right, so this, okay. Bob, Bob, Bob introduced me to this um, a couple of weeks ago. And again, it's another one of those items which is not widely advertised as being part of the hoard. And this really caught my imagination uh, for lots of reasons. Can you please tell us what this is and more about it, Bob? It's amazing. Okay. Well, what, what this is, is a, is a metal, um, uh, it's recorded, it, everyone refers to it and everyone acknowledges it even Rupert, uh, Bruce Mitford, acknowledges that this is a Celtic stag, a representation of a Celtic stag. Wow. Um, but what well, they couldn't be British, British, of course, but we'll let, them, we'll let the words stand Yes. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, you, you would see I put this, the, the, the Celtic in, uh, you know... <laughs> yes, you did, yes. yes. In quotes. Because, you know... Uh, well, the word Celtic, the stag, I can see it's a stag. That's, that's okay, I'll yeah. go with stag. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm okay. I've had therapy. I can deal with the C word. It's okay. <laughs> now, the, the important thing to, to look at here is where it was found. And if I can find my little cursor again, because white on white, it doesn't... Oh, no, nope, yeah, it's floating yeah, around. It was. Yeah, I got it here. Yeah. So, th this is this is how the the. This is a plan found. view. Yeah, this is looking from above. Yeah. Is that right? This is this is looking down on how they were okay. found in the ground. So we well, had it there a minute ago. Here we go again. It's yeah. so. This is the Celtic stag here. Just okay. Here, next to it, we got this iron standard, which we'll look at later. And we look at this whetstone, which a uh, whetstone is a big stone used for uh, sharpening tools or weapons. But this one is a very large one, and and and, and it's got a ceremonial, I believe, function rather than a practical. It's function. so large, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, the 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 crucial thing to look at is where this stag's head was found, and it is in that position there. So between the iron standard and the whetstone. Now, when it was originally displayed, if you look on the left-hand side, the iron standard was, was displayed uh, and reconstructed with the stag's head on top of it. Um, now, looking, yeah. yeah, the iron standard is reminiscent of the standards that the Romans had. And again, if I can find my cursor, so you had the... The iron stag, uh, the, the Celtic stag up on the top, and then from you, you had this arrangement here, a, gri a square grid thing, which then had iron fixings which went down to here, and from in these little triangle areas, then they put pennants. Yeah, presumably a so, flag or a pennant. Yeah, yeah. and and then you you've got a spike at the bottom, which can then either be uh, put inserted in the ground. Or inserted into some kind of a holder, perhaps on a horse, oh, so right. you're riding along with the standard stuck up. Uh, and the whole idea was, yeah, to to announce the presence of the king, or to announce or know, a rallying point or something, perhaps or yeah. a rallying point or who it was. Mm. On the right hand side, so how long is this one, and how tall is this? Oh, it's it's about uh, it's just less than two meters. I think it's about one point seven, one point eight. All right, meters. okay. So it's not massively tall. It's not, it's, it's not massive, no. Okay, so it's about man height kind of thing, roughly. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's, that's just a rough idea. Yeah. And then, as as, as currently displays, you'll notice that the stag head is noticeably missing. <laughs> so what's happened there then? Up until the 1970s, um, it was displayed like that. Uh, from, from the 70s onwards, uh, the stag's head, stag's, stag's, stag's head was taken off the iron standard and then put on top of the whetstone. Oh, and, okay. uh, and that then becomes like a, you know, as you can see on the, on the right-hand picture, it then becomes like a cer ceremonial mace. It's got a ceremonial function. So was there any explanation um, given for that, or just a change of thinking, or something, or no, just a change of thinking? And if, if you, if, but if you saw where, you know, if we go back to where it was found, it, you know, 
the top of the um, the top of the standard is is a long way from there. No, t yeah, top of the standard is here. Oh, so okay. if the if, if the stag was fixed to the top of the standard, that's where you would have thought it would be found. Hmm. So it, it is highly likely, and I and I agree with them that that. Yeah, you know, the the iron standard is more likely to have um, come off the whetstone because, again, if we go back to that picture there, you can see the the whetstone was placed at at the top of yeah you know, at the top of the mm. at the top of the person. Now, the obviously the iron standard you can see there the configuration of it when when the, the um, the cabin that the the person was buried in collapsed and all the earth came down on top of it and pressed down on it the standard would have fallen over and may have knocked off the stag's head off the top of the whetstone so i think it is highly probable that the the, the stag's well, head was placed, it could also, placed on the whetstone yeah, yeah I, I, there's also a chance as it collapsed it could have toppled off the top of the thing before the pole fell i suppose well it, it, yeah but I if it's it did, here is it yeah, it's, it's not certain, but if it did, it would have ended up more in this position here. It, it, it seems fixed in this position, so it, it looks like there was a slight displacement of the whetstone when the shield and the standard fell over. It does seem more likely, doesn't it? It's hard to yeah. be certain, though, isn't it? So, uh, uh, you know, I don't think you can argue, argue about that, but the, the argument is, right, well, if it's a Celtic stag on top of your right. ceremonial mace, why isn't it a Welsh mace? Why isn't it a British mace? Or why is it called a Welsh mace or a British mace? Yes, yes. Yes. So what's now, the, the then? What's the mace? Part called? of the reason they don't was if you look on, 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 on this wet stone, at the top of it, it's got four little heads. Yes, oh, yes, little yeah, faces, so, yes. Yeah. Now, those four little heads, three of those heads have got beards and one doesn't. And then if you look at the bottom end, which you know, is down here, it's also got four little heads, but all of those heads are beardless. Now, the mainstream theory on this is that the bottom heads are all female. But if you look at them, they look distinctly manly to me, but they don't have beards, so they've got to become female. But there's no explanation why up on the top then, if they're supposed to represent men, why one of them has not got a beard when we know that Anglo-Saxons are uh, one of their features is that they were bearded. Famously bearded. Has anyone thought about their uh, biblical links with that? So I remember when we looked at um, stained glass windows with Dr. Pigeon a couple of years ago in Landeff, there were stories there about certain prophets that grew beards and some didn't and that kind of thing. Yeah. Just, just wonder what the, what, any idea what the purpose would be of this ceremonial mace? Just, just for, well, it, walking it, around it, looking it, important, is it? I mean, it's described as a whetstone, and it's did, the, the, uh, smaller versions of this are, were used for uh, sharpening blades. This is but this one is for too, a blade sharpener, doesn't it? Yeah, no, th this one is too big and too heavy to have been, you know, used um, in practical terms, and there is absolutely no wear on it, so it's never been used to sharpen a blade. And that's why, again, it's, it's ceremonial. But again, it's one of these are things that historians and archaeologists, if they, if they don't know what something is, they always fall back on either religious item or ceremonial item, you know, when, when they haven't a clue what the real function is. Um, yes. But it, it, again, if you, if you look at the way that the guy is holding on the right-hand side, it's not beyond the bounds of possibility that it was used as a ceremonial mace in, in, in ceremonies of some kind, you know. Yeah, some, yeah like, yep. Yeah. Black rod you're having, there, you're having the meeting with the king and I, I come in you know wielding my ceremonial mason and stag's head but the interesting thing is if these were scandinavians or anglo-saxons why would you be going in with a symbol of authority and power <laughs> which has gone the top of it a Celtic stag. stag yeah so th there's a big question mark there, and none of it's none of it has been answered satisfactorily to, to you know to, to my satisfaction anyway. And the other thing is when you look, if I can find my cursor again, if you look at this area here where where how it's fixed, the fitting of, of the 
stag's head to the top of the mace looks a bit <laughs> looks a bit suspect to me. Yeah, it's not it's not like a perfect fit. It's not, it's not <laughs> a good fit at all, is it? See it? And if you blow that up and have a closer look the at it, quality of the workmanship and all these things, that's quite yeah. a shoddy job there, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it the, how it was fitted to the top of the uh, of, the, of this uh, mace or, or whetstone is yeah, mm, is a little bit dubious to me. It, it doesn't seem a perfect fit or or high workmanship in in doing mm. it. It just seems to me that it's been plonked on top. Any significance for that observation, do you think, or just an observation? Well, you know, again, we got asked the question, did, you know, was this stag on top of the standard, was it on top of the mace, or was it just there in the grave as a, you know, as a, as, as a spoiler of war, yeah. perhaps, or whatever? Okay. We don't know. It's one of those unanswered questions. that There isn't an answer to it. Yeah, it'd be good to hear more about that thought process, wasn't it? Yeah. So, uh, and again, it's coming back down to why did it take 40 years for them to decide that? That's true you know, as well, it, yes. It, it, it's, if they were looking at these things day in, day out, surely, you know, you know surely they would have come to a, a conclusion quicker than that. Well, I, uh, well, from my point of view, I think this is where you, you've touched on it already, is the, um, where groups and numbers come in. You can't work in isolation, stuff like this. You have to talk to other people. You have to bounce ideas. You show 100 people in a room, one person might see something everyone else has missed. That is the way humans tend to work. Uh, uh, and that's why I'm adamant that these things should be open to more, you know, more people. And it should be open degree, to it. Yeah. it. They certainly should be made available for inspection by independent researchers, not kept at bay because you're not a professional historian or, or architect. Mm. The, the other thing is, it's, it's another classic example of inertia. Once the stag was fitted on top of the standard, Job done. Tick that box. Let's go on to another one. We've got another couple of thousand artifacts to look at. Yeah, yeah, if they go, uh, yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. And it's it's only until you got to the end of the process. And don't forget, Rupert was still producing his publications till the you know to the to the seventies early eighties. Uh, yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure he worked very diligently and very hard. You can't do no. it all one person, can you? It's too much. No, but, but, but it was only at, at that point then when people then decided to go back and start revisiting things. Up, up to that point, First it, it, to that, it, yeah. yeah, up to that point, everyone was, was more concerned with actually going through all the artifacts so we can get the report finally published and all done and dusted before we actually go back and start revisiting what we've done and check out that we got it right. Yeah, and you think how many people would have loved to volunteer to help? It wouldn't have been a budget issue at all, would it? Well, well, no, and there's there's a lot of people who, who you know who, who are experts in this kind of thing, and we've we all looked at it and, and perhaps come up with alternative theories or, or, or alternative propositions. Well, I'm, I'm, but, you know, I'm a great believer as well that uh, you know even a broken clock is right twice a day, as they used yeah. to say, isn't it? <laughs> someone, the most someone from the public. We just spot something, you go, I've seen that. That reminds me of my grandmother's farm where we had a what's it thing on the wall. Or, you know mm. what I mean? You don't know where someone's going to get a connection or see something, do you? No. It could, it could be something mundane that just people haven't seen for a long time and someone, someone might have seen it. So well, let's get more people involved. That's the good thing, isn't it? Get this information. No, it, it, it's, it's the good thing. But I, I think the, the important thing to take away from this is, right, okay, we don't know what yes. the stank is attached to. But Nothing what we do know that, is, is there. Yeah, excellent. So, so you know, there's a story to be told there, and someone needs to look deeper into it and 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 dig out, you know, dig out what the real story is. Because I'm I'm not certain that that, that what was portrayed there is is correct. But because that mainly because of the fi fixture, you know, it doesn't seem to me that that is seating. No, that's very important. That was that been done recently. Then that's been stuck on like that. That's been done since about the seventies. When when they when they took it off the off the iron standard. That's pretty That's poor, isn't it? Boring. Stick it on one like that. that. There we go. All right. Well, that's, okay. that's a good that's a good place to stop then. And we yes, very it good. Yes, thank you. And I like the guy on the right hand side as well with his big helmet. Yeah, no, it it, it looks quite <laughs> quite menacing in a way, doesn't it? Well, have you ever done any? Um, any re recreation stuff, fighting with swords and things, you know, rubber swords no. and all that? No. I tell you, you put, I've, I've done some. You put a full helm on like that. You are, you're going to last seconds. 
it's bad enough just a full helm with with somewhere for your mouth you can't breathe yeah. you can hardly see you know no, you, you feel I, the vision is like is like that it, you know yeah, it's, it's, you feel the vision. yeah you feel the vision is going to be totally restricted yeah that's that's like uh, this. and then you can't breathe either because the no. things over your you know that oof. I wouldn't want to be fighting. Uh, and and you are you are carrying a lot of weight. I mean, you know, yeah, if you, you put that, if, you need. He, he's, he's got his sword on there. He's got his helmet on. He's got his, his leather jerkin. And he's got a you and his shield. shield. Yeah, yeah. He's got his heavy shield, and and it, you know that that's a lot of poundage to be carrying about and trying to charge up hell, trying to charge someone, or trying to defend yeah, someone yeah. attacking so you. Fighting it, for your life, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a lot of weight to carry around. There we go. Well, I'll be fighting the mic for my life if I don't go soon. Okay. <laughs> Ah, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed that and found it informative. Britain's Hidden History Group has so much more going on on our YouTube channel. The one you're watching now, there's a live stream, 8 o'clock UK time every Sunday. We speak to people like Wilson and Blackett, reprint their old books and help produce new ones. We go researching to the tops of mountains all the way down to the bottoms of caves. Busily recording the books, you can listen to them as well and looking at mysteries and working out what we're not being taught in schools and preserving it because the physical and written evidence is rapidly disappearing. You can also find out how to read ancient writing and hieroglyphs using the Welsh language. It's amazing. It's a Facebook group where this is being discussed. Along with a website, you can buy the books and help us. Also, as you can see, there's now a Patreon page where just a few pounds a month will make all the difference in trying to keep the project going and preserve this history for future generations and also to find out for ourselves what is going on, what is Britain's hidden history. So until the next time, Heather!